Welcome to PCR's Got Talent. Over 40 participants under 40 submitted their video abstracts. With great difficulty, the jury drew up a long list, then a short list, and then finally named our three finalists. But before we meet them, William, first of all, what exactly is PCR's Got Talent? So it's a scientific abstract competition, but the purpose really, the objective is to empower and accompany the young generation to the highest level. Because as you know at PCR, we believe that they represent the future. But, you know, we have a short video that explains much better what it is than I can do. And welcome to Sydney. I am Dr. Tom Ford. I'm an interventional cardiologist and I'm currently working in New South Wales, Australia at Gosford Hospital. So we were subjected to, I guess, great intense uh, presentation skills program that helped me to know the value of being punctual, keeping the presentation short and to the point. I was lucky to meet some great friends at PCR's Got Talent and I think a network of potential research contacts as well as some collaborators. So PCR's Got Talent allowed me to be competitive applying for interventional jobs as a consultant. I'm very grateful to the opportunities and I want to send a special message to this year's contestants. I want to wish you all the best of luck. Be yourself, make sure you enjoy the programme and I look forward to watching you. Take care. Hi, my name is Yusuf Ahmed and I'm currently an advanced fellow in structural heart disease and interventional cardiology at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles in the United States. And I was fortunate enough to participate in and win the PCR's Got Talent competition back in 2018. Participating in and winning PCR's Got Talent has really helped my career in several different ways. I think one of the main things I took from it was an increased confidence in my research. The second major benefit that I found from participating in PCR's Got Talent was the increased visibility and recognition, both for myself and for my research. Finally, another thing that I've really benefited from in terms of entering and winning the competition was just increased involvement with the meeting in general, which is something I'm very grateful for. I was invited back in subsequent years as faculty and was involved in multiple other sessions and my involvement with the meeting and the committee has increased as a result of my participation in that competition and that's something which I'm enjoying in the next phase of my career. And we see just how international the PCR community really is. Tom has clearly gone from Scotland to Sydney. We can hear it. And Youssef equally from England to Los Angeles. Jean, it was nice to see last year's winners. Oh, yes. And uh, really, uh, it's great to see the impact uh, of winning. PCR's got talent. And uh, I like the idea uh, that PCR helps the the younger generation and open the door uh, for all of them. Absolutely. And in yeah. um, the same time, I would like to uh, take the opportunity to thank 
all the graders uh, who spend time uh, to select the best uh, high quality submission we received. Yeah, absolutely. And now, live at Euro PCR, we have our three finalists for PCR's Got Talent 2021. Now, they have all worked very hard with professional PCR coaches to summarize their research in just one minute, which, of course, is quite a challenge. So, please welcome our first finalist here to tell us about optimal protamine to heparin ratio for the prevention of bleeding complications. We have Baravan Al Kasu. Baravan. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to have the opportunity to present the results of our study regarding the optimal protamine to heparin dosing ratio for the prevention of bleeding complications in patients undergone TAVA. Well, despite major advances, TAVA is still associated with several procedure specific complications such as bleeding and vascular complications that have a significant impact on mortality. Although our research group was able to show in the first step that the administration of protamine resulted in significantly lower rates of uh, serious bleeding events after TAVA, the optimal protamine dosing is still not known, as protamine also has dose-dependent anticoagulant and thrombotic effects. Therefore, we compared patients with full antagonization of heparin with patients who received a partial antagonization of heparin. The key finding of our study is that the full antagonization of heparin resulted in significantly lower rates of the primary endpoint, mainly driven by lower rates of um, life threatening and major bleeding complications. Regarding safety endpoints, there were no significant differences between both groups with comparable rates of stroke and myocardial infarction. So, the outcome of patients undergoing TAVA may be further improved by the administration of protamine for the prevention of bleeding complication in the optimal protamine to heparin dosing ratio of one to one. Thank you. Well done, Baravan Al Kasu. Well done and thank you. Now, please stay with us um, because now we're going to welcome our second finalist who has just one minute to talk about his work on a patient-specific algorithm to achieve commissural alignment with accurate NEO. Matteo Kessengi. Good afternoon from Milan. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I'm going to present the result of our study. Uh, it's a proof of concept study in which we evaluate uh, uh, safety and efficacy of this patient-specific algorithm to achieve commercial alignment with accurate NEO. As we are moving to treat uh, low-risk patient and younger patient with TAVI, trying to eliminate um, transcarded heart valve commissure to native commissure uh, may become crucial. Uh, we prove that uh, with our technique, uh, which was uh, easy and uh, reproducible, um, uh, we evaluate with a CT scan evaluation post-TAVI, and we prove that uh, our technique was safe and effective in avoid coronary clearance in 100% of study patients, and moreover, guarantee uh, less than 5% of moderate misalignment or more. Uh, last but not least, uh, our technique uh, should be and uh, could be applied to other self-expanding devices more than accurate NEO. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matteo Kasengi, and bravo. And equally, do stay with us, because now for our last finalist, again with 60 seconds to tell us about his pot puff study, Farhang Aminfar. Farhang. Hi, everyone. I would love to share with you an, an angiographic sign that could improve bifurcation PCI. As we all know, bifurcation lesions are frequent, with more than 20% of malaposition, which may lead to instant aristenosis and stent thrombosis, right? Well, with the POTPOF study, we turned the POT technique into the POTPOF sign a very simple and effective angiographic sign to detect malaposition and avoid the associated complications. During the POT, contrast medium was injected and its progression in the distal branches was defined as positive pot puff sign. When compared to the OCT, the negative predictive value and the accuracy of the sign, both superior to 90%, suggested that the pot puff sign can be trusted to exclude stent malaposition. When, when the pot puff sign is positive, the risk of malaposition into about 70%, but when it's needed, this risk drastically drops to 6%. And that's how we can make a huge difference. So next time we treat a bifurcation, let's also consider the butt of sign. Thank you. 
Well done, Farhang Amin Far. Thank you. And well done to all of you. Now, to announce this year's winner, Jean Fajadé. Jean. So I'm very proud to announce the winner of PCR God Talent uh, 2021. And uh, the winner is Farang Amin Far. Thank you. Well done, Farang. And uh, you have to know that the choice was very difficult. But I think what uh, really convinced uh, all the group was your clarity, your enthusiasm, and the uh, importance of your research itself. William. Yes, indeed. Very well done, Farron. But let's say that it was a tough call because Matteo Kazengi and Baravan al Kassu also were extremely good, indeed. So, Matteo Baravan, congratulations. Well done. Enjoy the rest of your PCR. Thank you. Uh, now, William, thank I you very think... much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Now, William, I think you had a couple of questions for Farhang Amin Far. Yeah, uh, um, you know, I'd like to ask you, Farhang, when the test that you described so well is positive, what do you actually do? You perform pot again, larger balloon, higher pressure, or is this a reason to use OCT? Tell us, what is the practical impact? Well, absolutely. This is an important uh, point that you're addressing there. I would like to uh, sum up all of the PUTPUF study to better answer this question. So the, the PUTPUF sign, when it's positive, it means that on the angiogram, the contrast medium progresses in the distal branches despite the PUT balloon that is inflated. And this suggests malaposition. So positive PUTPUF sign, malaposition. Now, the major ad, uh, um, advantage of this sign is that we can immediately correct that by increasing the diameter of the pot balloon in order to reach perfect opposition. And we, we do that until the, the pot pop sign is negative. Now, the contrast medium is blocked by the pot balloon, and this way we have largely reduced the risk of malaposition. Excellent. We can see that all that work on concision has paid off. <laughs> um, thank you, Farhang. Um, Jean, you have a question too. Yeah, well, we understand very well and clearly uh, from this uh, uh, really uh, brilliant explanation that the pot pop sign uh, is very useful to diagnose uh, malaposition, stent malaposition. But what about stent under deployment, which is different? Well, under expansion wasn't assessed in the PUTPUF study, but that highlights that we need to combine different techniques in the best way possible. For example, once the PUTPUF sign is negative, we could use stent enhancement technique uh, in order to check that the pot included all of the intended region. And with the same approach, we could check for stand on, under expansion. Then and then only, we could use the EOCT if needed. And let's be honest, I say that because even in Switzerland, where the OCT is largely available, it is rarely performed in non-left main bifurcations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and William, you were in fact curious about something completely different about Farhang's original video, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's not a scientific question, but I mean, the competition is also about communication skills. And I must say, Farhang, that all our colleagues, jury members, were very impressed by the way you are delivering the message, trying to set a different stage for <coughs> digital communication, etc. So. We were wondering, how did you actually manage to advance the slides without any visible movement? Well, well I, don't, I don't think people could even imagine all the setup, friends and family that helped me podcast my presentation. Uh, to be honest, I involved everyone I could through this competition. And so it was no technology, just somebody helping me changing the slides. So yeah, thanks to all of them. So, yeah, teamwork makes the dream worker. <laughs> so, William, what's the prize? What has our winner won? 
Well, uh, for, for all the contestants, uh, of course, they all benefit from the professional coaching and advice on, on their communication skills, so obviously also for the winner. But the finalists and the winner, they have clearly increased visibility, the chance to share your work, raise your profile on PCR channels and on PCR online. And of course, for Farhan, a ticket for Euro PCR 2022 as guest faculty and we very much hope to meet you there in person. So congratulations, Farhang Aminfar. Well done and prepare for worldwide fame, certainly within PCR. Well done. Gentlemen, a last word perhaps. William? Yes, I would like to um, invite all our young colleagues to consider joining PCR's Got Talent 2022. The competition is open. It starts in October this year for all colleagues under 40. Thank you. And Jean, now what have we got coming up? What's, a, what's coming up next? It's time. Thanks to coming up. Thanks to the support of Mentis and the collaboration of Sarge Gintra University Hospital, Gothenburg, Sweden. We have Thierry Lefebvre with an exceptional program dedicated to the management of coronary perforation in a real cat lab, but on the simulator.